Um, a Fourier transform of a function may not always exist. So we can imagine the possibility of certain pathological functions who don't, which don't have Fourier transforms. But uh, the functions that satisfy what are called the Dirichlet conditions uh, will have a Fourier transform. So the Dirichlet conditions, they're very simple. Uh, one of them is that the function is what's called absolutely integrable, which means that if you take the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the absolute value of the function, uh, then this value should be less than infinity. It should be finite. And the second thing is that if you, in any finite interval, uh, if you take this, the, this is the real line, you take any finite interval, the number of uh, maxima and the number of minima and the, and the number of discontinuities in this, in, in this interval are finite. So we can't have too many maxima or infinite number of maxima really. In this case, too many, or this is called lots of maxima, but still finite and minima. And then let, you could have jumps. You could not have too many jumps either. But as long as the number of jumps, uh, which are abrupt transitions, and uh, the number of maximum minima are limited, then you're going to be able to find a Fourier transform. And so the number of functions, the set of functions which don't satisfy the Dirichlet conditions is actually fairly small. And in fact, we can find the Fourier transform even for functions which you might think are very hard to find, which are very discontinuous. For example, remember the delta function, which is like this, which is defined basically by x t delta t is equal to x zero delta t, which means that the delta function essentially selects the value of x at the value 0, and then it scalarly multiplies delta t. So to find its Fourier transform, let's just plug it in. So we know that xj omega is going to be integral minus infinity to infinity delta t. That's your function, e to the minus j omega t dt, this is by definition. Now, because of this equation over here, we can, this can be replaced by taking the value of this at time zero, which is going to be e to the minus j omega zero, which is going to be just e to the minus zero, which is one. And so that's a constant. So this becomes just integral minus infinity to infinity, delta t dt, which by definition is equal to one. So what that means is that the Fourier transform of, uh, of, uh, of, of the delta t function is one, which you write like this, delta t, sort of double arrow, one. And this is the Fourier transform. So the Fourier transform of one is, of delta t is one, and the inverse Fourier transform of one is delta t. More generally, the inverse Fourier transform is given by the formula, this particular formula, so the inverse, to go from the frequency domain to the time domain is given by this, so the inverse Fourier transform is given by x of t. So remember, we're going now from the frequency domain to the time domain. So that's x of t. It's 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity. So now we're going to plug in the Fourier transform, which is x of j omega. And we're just going to multiply the e to the j omega t dt, which is more or less symmetric to what you're doing earlier. Remember, with the Fourier transform, we multiply by uh, e to the minus j omega t. This box over here tells you the Fourier transform. You, you take the function xt, and you're going to multiply it by e to the minus j omega t dt. And to get the other way around, we divide by 1 over 2 pi. That's just for normalization. And we multiply by e to the j omega t, the, uh, rather than minus j omega t dt. And so uh, let's compute, for example, the inverse Fourier transform of the following signal. So we are given a function, uh, function x of j omega. So it's a function of omega. Let's just say delta omega minus omega naught. So why not? This looks like uh, this is a delta uh, signal whose uh, signal energy is concentrated at uh, omega naught rather than at zero. And so the solution for this is given by x of t. We're going to just plug it in is 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity, delta omega minus omega naught, e to the j omega naught, oops, e to j omega t, 
sorry, I made a mistake here. There should be d omega. There's a function of omega, so of course it should be d omega. Uh, e to the j omega t d omega. And again, what you're going to do here is that this we recognize is selecting the value of e to j omega t at the step j omega at omega naught. So this can be replaced by e to the j omega naught t, right? And that for when you look at d omega as a constant, so we can pull it out, and so this becomes uh, e to the j omega naught t by 2 pi integral uh, minus infinity to infinity delta omega minus omega naught d omega. But this is just one, right? This is just one because the integral of the delta function, even if it's shifted in frequency space, is always going to be one. It's a, it's the impulse. And so we find that uh, the uh, transform, so the delta omega minus omega naught, which is the uh, Fourier domain, it's going to be transformed into e to the j omega naught t by 2 pi. So these are inverses of each other. Of course, this is in the omega domain. This is in the time domain, the frequency domain and the time domain. And uh, and if you just, uh, uh, I'll show you in a minute that you can, uh, that the Fourier transform obeys linearity. So you're allowed to pre -multi can multiply with 2 pi on both sides. We can say that e to the j omega naught t uh, transforms to uh, 2 pi uh, delta omega minus omega naught. Oops, 2 pi delta omega minus omega naught. 